overview of the rules done, it is now time to create our warband. And as well as the rule book, you will also need to access the, um, the zip file. I think it's a zip file which contains all of the sheets, the gaming sheets that you're going to need. If you purchased a hard copy, I think you can probably get from the Black Oath website. But you are going to need the Warband roster sheet, which comes in sort of three pages. You have the, like the front page here, which includes space for your stash, your basic details, and four of your uh, members. Then there is another page where you can have an extra six. So again, you can just keep reprinting this to add as many Warband members as you have, or you can have. And then there is another sheet where you can put down all of your combat maneuvers and your command actions. Uh, we'll be discussing this as we actually play the game, but just get these printed out because you're gonna need these to keep records. And finally, you're going to need the hex map. And this is a simple hex sheet where every hex is numbered because there is a log sheet as well where you can keep track of what is in every hex. Kind of like your journey. So I've put here hex 41 is my starting hex, my camp, because you do have to identify one hex as being where your warband starts. And as the game progresses, you're going to explore from your starting hex and you hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, you're going to be developing a kingdom an area of control and in each of these hexes could be a location which you can then use to bolster and give you benefits or it could be the site of a battle there could be nothing um, and this is all rolled for during the management phase uh, after you've created your warband which we'll be doing in a second you will then start your first turn and you will start in the management phase so that will include things like exploring, potentially recruiting more members and sort of setting up for the battle. So you will generate, for example, uh, a, a possible location and you could decide to maybe go there and try to take control. That could generate the battle for the battle phase because every turn has, sorry, every round has basically those two uh, phases, battle and management. But you will be starting with, ma uh, with management phase. So I have, as I said just now, I've, I've designated this as my starting hex, 41. I was thinking about just doing it <laughs> in sequence, starting up here. But there are certain events that can basically prevent you from moving through or going into hexes. And if I start here, chances are with my dice, I'm going to end up with two hexes that I can't move through. And therefore, game over. So what I've done is I've started a little bit better. I've now got four options in terms of where I can explore and possibly move into. So let us create the warband. Now, the first thing you need to decide is what type of warband you're going to play. There are a number of choices. Let's see if I can pronounce these correctly. Cadenorians. Commoners, Demonic Host, Inquisition, Mercenaries, and Pavarians. I don't know if there's going to be expansions later, which bring in some uh, alternatives in terms of the type of warband. But this is what we have in the basic rulebook here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six choices. Now, this game is primarily designed to be a solo game or a co-op game. Um, if this was more of a versus game, sort of PvP game, um, I think six may be a bit limiting in terms of what you and your friends can choose from. But for a solo game, having a choice of six is perfectly fine. Um, there are rules in here for you to play versus, to play PvP if you want to, but its main focus is actually to be as a solo or co-op game. Now, we... Are going to be playing. Guess what? Guess which one I'm going to be playing. <laughs> we're going to be playing demons because, of course, I am. I love demons, so we're going to be playing the demonic host. So let's see what it says here. 
Although the vast majority of citizens within the kingdoms of Pavaria, Forso, Vildash, and the Kadenor Dominion are pious followers of the church, the burning light, very few actually believe in anything other than spiritual, metaphysical evil. The church teaches that the demonic forces are very real, but their influence is limited to the spiritual world. Most stories regarding sightings of actual physical demons are, at least officially, dismissed as fairy tales and attributed to peasant ignorance and gullibility. Regardless of what most people believe, demons and other evil spirits are an actual threat for the peoples of Nea. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I do have the Sacrifice RPG, but I must admit I haven't read a lot of it yet. I wanted to get into Broken Shores first. I don't know if that's pronounced Nea, Nia. I'm sure somebody will correct me. Nea. Nea sounds better. Uh, they remain mostly unknown due to their cunning, choosing to possess corrupt leaders, or hiding in the shadows of the night. Yep, sounds like my kind of warband. This type of subterfuge is rarely needed in a place like no man's land, though. The recent uptick of demonic activity in the region is due to the atrocities committed there, attracting evil spirits who easily corrupt and twist the humans and beasts in the region. These corrupted humans walk between two worlds, barely holding back their basic impulses and often murdering anyone slow enough to hide from them. Yeah, sounds very much like my kind of warband. <laughs> um, what do we have here? Okay, so every warband will have sort of special rules. For example, commoners, basically, they will have bonuses when they try to roll for locations. Um, what else is there? With the demons. Inhuman savagery. Demonic characters can never be broken, but cannot use ranged weapons. Ah, I didn't read. I didn't notice that. I didn't remember that. Okay. So that could be a problem, but never mind. Uh, no swords for hire will join a demonic host warband. Okay, so we've got one positive and two negatives. The positive is that we can never be broken. That is a condition that can really hinder you. However, we can't use ranged weapons and we can't get those special characters to join us. Um... Okay, I mean, it's a bit of a challenge, but we shall see what happens. Now, let me just move my warband sheet out of the way. What's next? Yes, again, every type of warband will have their own name generator, their own warband name generator. So we'll do that in a second. Also, there will be differences in terms of your starting force and your maximum force. So for a demonic host warband, we start the game with one witness who is basically your leader, two twisted soldiers, who are your veterans, and two grunts. So we're starting with five models, five troops, including the leader. Uh, a demonic host warband can have up to 10 members. So the maximum size of your warband is going to be 10. And like I mentioned, there are differences between the different factions, between the different things. Uh, the Inquisition, for example, again, you're starting with five. One Inquisitor, leader, Two Arthosian soldiers, veterans, and two deacons, grunts. But they can only have a maximum of eight members. Now, in terms of the games, in terms of the number of enemies you face, a lot of the time it's based on the number of members. It will say that there is one enemy per member in your warband, or one creature for every three members of your warband. Um... So it doesn't really hinder you that way, having, for example, like, like I say, the uh, Inquisitor's Warband. But it will hinder you in terms of the flexibility, in terms of the number of maneuvers that you will have inside your Warband. So the Inquisitor's definitely more quality over quantity. The Commoners are definitely quantity over quality. Look, they can have up to 15 members and they start with seven. Why? Because they're not very good. <laughs> Uh, what else do we have here? Okay, command actions. So, before a battle, your commander or your leader can select three command actions that they can use during that game. And you have to select from the ones under your warband type because they're all different. 
For example, the demonic host has one called demonic terror, demonic speed. You're not going to get that in the uh, Inquisition warband. You know, the Inquisition has got things like divine inspiration, ritual scarification. Um, <laughs> All very thematic, very evocative in terms of feeling the game. Uh, and then we have our troop types. Now, I think, as I mentioned before, when we were doing the overview, it is kind of limited in terms of what you can select from. You've got the leader, you've got the veteran, you've got the grunts or the recruits. Um, I, I know that you can adapt them and evolve them to an extent to fulfill certain roles but it would be nice to have i don't know maybe a little bit more variety maybe in, an, in a future expansion there'll be things like scouts maybe things like alchemists or or, or healers medics kind of thing and that, I mean, that's that's all there is in terms of your basic warband information it's four pages description and special rules names and numbers actions and troop types so what we're going to do i mean there are some other things we need to do like maneuvers and everything but let's let's start off here with our warband name and for that we're going to be rolling two d20s one for the adjective and one for the noun i think all of them yeah all of them have just the two so we're going to be rolling two d20s i'm going to have brown blue so we get a 13, the damned, and 10, sect. Right. Right, there we go. So my warband is known as the damned sect. Um, I think to begin with, I don't think we're going to be getting any increases. So we're going to be starting at level 1. Your warband level will be equal to your highest member level. Levels will go up with experience. They will get you boosts such as feats, weapon proficiencies, things like that. Um, so your warband level is equal to your highest member level. And I think to begin with, I don't think anyone's going to be starting higher than one. Now, in terms of supplies, you will be starting with a certain number of supplies. Let me just put a bookmark there. Let's go back to here. So... Uh, we will be starting with D20 plus 20 supplies. So we're starting with three. <laughs> no! So we're starting with 23 supplies. Oh, that's not good at all. Why is that not good? Well, I mean, supplies can be used to buy stuff, but it's also used for upkeep. Every turn, you've basically got to pay upkeep or your troops will leave and your upkeep is listed on their stat blocks here. My troops, my veterans, are going to cost me two supplies each to keep them. And my recruits are also two supplies each. Um, Inquisition is the same. I think commoners will probably be less. Let me check. Commoners. Yeah, for the commoners. This is the commoners, isn't it? Yeah. So for the commoners, the recruits only have an upkeep of one. Because they're cheaper. Right. Um, that's not good at all. But never mind. So what we do now is we have to have one witness, two twisted soldiers, and two grunts. So what we're going to do here is we're going to write down... There's no space no space for names or anything, so I'll just put it down here. So we, this is going to be my witness, or my leader. Uh, I'm going to have twisted soldiers. I'm going to put them down here. Uh, now I'm going to leave this one blank in case I can recruit another veteran. So what I'm going to do is, on this expansion sheet here for the roster, I'm then going to be putting down my grunts, which are called grunts, funnily enough. So, grunt and grunt. I mean, I think it's more likely that you'll be getting grunts to, to join your warband. But I'm going to keep space there just in case. Right, we can have a maximum of 10 members. So let me just uh, quickly write down the stats onto the sheet and we'll come right back. Right, I have written down the details onto the Warband roster. So the Witness, which is the leader, has a Strength of 2, Dex of 1, Constitution of 3, SPI, I think it's Spirit. Let me just 
do 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 spirit yep yeah, spi it's like wisdom kind of thing um is three now vigor is basically their hit points and it's equal to constitution times three so three times three is nine level one has a loyalty of 20 which basically makes him very loyal because obviously he's the leader but um you know <laughs> for other other guys you can go up and down Speed of three, and there is actually an upkeep. I didn't notice it just now, but the, even the leaders do have an upkeep. Uh, obviously, you probably want to pay that upkeep first. Um, he does have an ability. Uh, inhuman resolve. After receiving a strike that would take them out of action, they can immediately make a melee attack against a target within range. And this attack deals plus D6 damage. So it's like a, a last strike before they succumb to their wounds. The twisted... Sisters, sorry, Twisted Soldiers. <laughs> the Veterans, we have two. Uh, strength of two, zero decks. That actually could be a problem. Uh, constitution of three, Spirit of two, Vigor of nine, so nine hit points essentially. Loyalty of eight. Again, depending on how things go, that can go up or down. Speed of three. Uh, speed is essentially how many squares they can move. And an upkeep of two. And the... Uh, Twisted Soldiers, the veterans also have a skill or an ability, Uncanny Precision. Basically, they can do critical hits on a 19 or 20 instead of just a 20. Cumulative with other similar effects. Uh, I've also done the stats for the Grunts. They have two Strength, zero Dex, two Constitution, one Spirit, and therefore only six Vigor or six Hit Points. A loyalty of five, so these guys, these guys are more likely to run. A speed of three, upkeep of two, and again they have an ability, it's called swift movement. A grunt is able to move quickly and deftly on the battlefield. They ignore all difficult terrain penalties. Very, very useful. Now you'll also notice that each of the model types or the troop types have um, a list of weapon proficiencies. This is the weapons that they can use. Over here, the command actions, um, we'll be selecting those later when we actually start the battle. No need, to, no need to write those down yet. There will be maneuvers. Now, combat maneuvers are things where the troops bring past knowledge or abilities with weapon to the warband and kind of teach everybody what they are. So every member of your warband will basically bring a maneuver of your choice but everybody in the warband can actually use it um, and once you've picked it you can't change it again um, when you recruit new people to the warband again you can also bring another another maneuver to the to the group to the warband we'll look at those in a second um, what i want to do first is roll up roll up the gear and then distribute it amongst the warband members so we are going to be rolling uh, five weapons, five armor, and two pieces of gear. So let us go to that page. Handy having bookmarks. So page 102, this is where you have the random loot and also weapons and armor and stuff. Right, so we're going to be rolling dump, 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 twice on the gear, uh, five weapons, and then five armor. Right. And these are percentage. They're all percentage. Okay. So let's roll first. We'll do the two pieces of random gear first. We get 27, a bandage, and 84, a skill manual. Okay. Right, let's have a look and see what those are. A bandage is expendable, you can heal one vigor and or remove the effects of certain critical strikes or bleeding condition. So I think that would be quite useful, more in terms of the critical strikes. Now, um, in terms of what they can carry, there is a limit. Uh, two weapons, one shield and two items from the gear table. Each model can carry two weapons, a maximum, uh, two weapons, one shield and two items. So I have to decide who's going to be carrying the bandage, if anybody or whether I just keep it in the stash. What else have we got? A skill manual. Expendable. Gives a character plus one XP. Now, I don't think I'm going to be using that yet. That will probably be useful when I'm doing the advancement. 
because you, you need to accumulate a certain number of XP before you can go up a level. So if I get a character that basically goes up to three, I could then use that to give him four and make him go up one level. So I don't want to use that just yet because I don't know who's going to be needing it to go up at the time, but very useful. Oh, it's a hundred. It's worth a hundred supplies. Okay, good. That's a nice, nice little piece of stash. Now we come to the weapons and armor. Now let's have a look and see. We will do the armor first. So, armor. We've got to do this five times. So the first piece of armor. Um, Yeah, I think I'll just write it on the back here. Oh, I have actually written down all those skills, so I don't have to keep referring to the book. The the warband, the witness, the um, the veteran, and the grunts skills. I've written them on the back, so I'll just note them down here, and I can rub them out later. So, five pieces of armor. We get eighty-seven. A visored helm. That's not a good start. I wanted full sets of armor. Second, we get a 76 um, padded leather. Okay. Next, we get a 63. 63 is an open helm. Oh my god, I want armor, not helms. <laughs> uh, three, brigandine. And then the last one, we get a 76, which is another padded leather. So I've got two padded leather, one brigandine, one visored helm, and one open helm. Two helmets, three sets of armor. Um, let's take a look and see. So the open helm gives DL plus one and minus one sp I, spirit. A visored helm gives DL plus two and a minus two to the SPI. Okay, padded leather, what does that give? Padded leather gives a DL of 12 plus dex. Hmm, okay. Brigandine gives the same. Me. Okay. DL12 plus dex. My warband doesn't have good dex. Um, so why why that why would you ever use brigandine instead of padded leather? Padded leather's light. Right, so now I've got to distribute. So the armor's all the same, it's just a matter of who gets the helmets, isn't it? I think my grunts are not going to have any armor. Now, if you don't have any armor, then your starting DL is 8 plus dex. So, if my grunts are not going to have any armor, I mean, should I give them the helms? It's... Uh, no, I don't think so. So, 8 plus dex, so the defense level is 8. That's not good, because that's the target number for people to hit them. Um, I'm thinking... The brigandine I'll give to my, I think I'll give to my leader, my witness. So I'll put here item, item, shield, weapon, weapon. I'll put here uh, brigandine. I don't know if that's spelt right, brigandine. Um, DL is 12 plus dex, so 13. Okay. And my... Veterans are going to get the padded leather, which will give them uh, 12, because their dex is zero. Now I'm thinking that I will also give them the helmets, because that will, that will raise their DL defense level. So I've got one open helm and one visored helm. So we give the visored helm here, Now, there's not actually any space to put their names if you want to name your warband members. So the visored helm gives plus 
2. So his SPI is essentially 0, and his DL defense level is now 14. The guy down here is going to have the open helm. So that gives him minus 1 to his spirit or SPI, and he now has 12, 13 defense level. Okay. Well, that's the armor done. What about weapons? Let's sort out the weapons. You've got to roll five times for weapons. Where's the random weapon table? Uh, here it is, right. Now, I do have a set of miniatures in mind for this. Um, I've just got hold of a set of miniatures from Artisan Guild, which I'll be printing and painting based on what we get here. Um, so if there's something that really is not included in that weapon set from Artisan's Guild, I'll change it to something else. Plus also, we are not allowed to have any ranged weapons, so that has to be taken into account as well. What I'll do is I'll reroll. If it's something that's really not suitable, I'll just reroll. So we'll use the brown dice for this one. Right? Dump, dump. right, so five weapons. First, we get a 79, a rapier. Um, not really a demonic host weapon, but I'll write it down. I can do counts as. So we've got a rapier, uh, 42, heavy crossbow, can't have ranged weapons. 35 a hand axe. Okay. Third weapon. Three. A bastard sword. That's more like it. <laughs> uh, number four. 75 quarter staff. That's going for one of the grunts. That's going for one of the, <laughs> one of the little guys. And final weapon. Let's get something nice. A 93. A spear. Hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, the only one that I'm kind of thinking doesn't really suit the miniatures, possibly, is the rapier. So if that's the case, I may just change that to maybe a long sword. I've got a variation of weapons. Now I've got to think who's going to have them. So I'm thinking for the rapier, I'm just going to change that to a long sword. I don't think it's not going to give me any real benefits. If anything, no, it's not going to give me any benefits in terms of. Um, I mean, it's worth more money. Um, if I change it for, I, I change it because the long sword's worth ten, rapier's worth five. So I kind of want to get something equivalent, maybe a mace. Uh, halberd, great club, flail. What about flail? It's the same price. Defensive and finesse. What does a flail give me? Unwieldy and unblockable. <laughs> that sounds very much like a demonic host weapon. Let's have a look. Uh, unwieldy, minus two to attack. Oh, that's not good. Unblockable attacks with this ignore parrying and deal bonuses from shields. Well, I might regret it, but I think I'll go with the flower. So I'm gonna, I'm going to replace. Here's my pencil. I'm gonna replace the rapier with a flail. Just because it wouldn't, it doesn't suit doesn't suit the army at all. And I don't think I'm gonna have a miniature with the flail. So, all right. So I'm gonna give the bastard sword. Again, such small area to write weapons. I don't think the leader will let anybody else have it. So we've got the bastard sword for the leader. The open helm guy. I think I'll give him the hand axe. Oh, I need to check whether these are proficiencies they can have, don't I? I'll do that in a bit. Uh, this guy will have the flail. And 
the grunts have got a quarter staff and a spear. So it doesn't really matter who's got what. Let me just quickly check. That's all I need to know at the moment. I need to maybe do a quick reference sheet with all this information. Now, I need to check whether these guys can actually use those weapons. Let's have a look. Uh, grunts. Cannot use a quarter staff or spear. What? Uh, what else we got? Okay, the veteran can use the flail. Uh, what have we got here? Flail and hand axe. Flail, hand axe, okay. And the leader, bastard sword, okay. So it's just the grunts. The grunts can't use... They can't use spears or quarter staffs. That's a problem. I mean, technically they could use the, the flail, but... Oh, okay, the Twisted Soldier could use a spear. But I don't think any of the models have got a spear. Oh, that could be a, that could be an issue. But none of them can use quarter staffs. So I think quarter staff I'm gonna have to re-roll. Um, I need to check whether my whether the, the I can actually do the miniatures. Yeah, no, I don't have the miniatures. So what I'm gonna do. Again, <laughs> license to change because we're playing solo. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to re-roll those two weapons. The, the veterans are fine with the flail and the hand axe, but the grunts, I'm going to have to re-roll. I think, I think that's the, again, I'm bending the rules a little bit. I am making some changes, but it's to, it's to suit the miniatures and to make, you know, make it all good. So give me a second and we'll re-roll those weapons. Now, I know that some of you are going to say, well, you rolled it, you've got to use it. But, yeah, I'm trying to make them fit with the miniatures I have in mind. Um, let's have a look and see. Now, I'm going to have to keep an eye on this. I don't have a huge amount of choice. So, we're going to re-roll the staff, sorry, the, the staff and the spear. I might be something that we can actually use. So, let's, let's try again. We'll keep rolling until we can get something they can use. So, we get a 13, a dagger. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, it's something they can use, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they can use it. Dang it. Trading in a quarter staff and spear for a dagger. Finesse. No! <laughs> oh, what the hell. I'll have to use it. I've got to use it. I can't keep mucking about. Right, so this guy, oh, I'll give it to this guy. Dagger. Need to get him a better weapon. So he's got a dagger and no armor. Oh dear. He's not going to last long, is he? Right, the other grunt, therefore, will be armed with... Let's get something nice. We get a 08 club. Oh, the, 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 the dice are basically saying, yeah, you want to trade in these weapons? Yeah, we'll let you. Here's the worst of the lot. Club, I think he can use a club. Yes, he can use a club. A club is simple. A weapon relatively easy to use, increasing the attack roll by a given amount. So the club actually gives a plus one to attack. Um, which, again, you can't complain. So, okay, so I've got one grunt with a club and one grunt with dagger. No armor. That's okay. Now, if they only start with one proficiency, weapon proficiency each, then we're going to have to get another proficiency before I give them another weapon. Or do they start with all of these ones listed? That would actually make a lot more sense, but then why have such a small area on the... I mean, for example, if we look at the witness at the leader, yeah? He's got all these weapon proficiencies. I can't write them all in there. Right, what's next? Next, we have to identify the maneuvers. So each character brings something different to the table, something that sets them apart from other members of a warband, and these are known as combat maneuvers. So you've got a whole selection of maneuvers here, and everybody can use. Where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Um, all characters can use all the maneuvers you bring. So these are like special attacks or special actions that you can actually use. And you'll write these down on this, I think it's page three of the uh, roster sheets.
So I'm going to choose five of these. I'm thinking Battle Cry sounds good. So this is only used by the leader or veterans. The character lets out a fierce cry, inspiring their allies. All friendly units in a five square radius. Yeah, radius. Get a plus one to their attack rolls until next round. It's a free action as well. So I'm thinking that will be a good one. So I'm going to have that. So we've got Battle Cry. Uh, two, three, four, five. I also think... I also think that faint could be a good idea because that gives you an advantage. So what happens here, as an action, you bake an attack, but instead of rolling one dice, you're rolling two dice. So you're more likely to hit. The other one is target weak spot. As an action, they make an attack. If it's successful, it becomes a critical hit. That's useful, but you've got to hit the guy first to begin with. With the faint, it actually increases your chance of hitting. So I'm also thinking that faint would be useful, especially for the grunts. So we've got faint... The third one, there was uh, healing here, recover, as an action, a character heals, d4 plus one vigor, they cannot be engaged in combat. That could be extremely useful. Um, all healing is going to be very useful. Uh, there's no limitations in terms of you know, the demonic host that you can't take healing. I mean, it doesn't really make the, <laughs> doesn't really feel <laughs> demonic, but you know, demons Demons can heal. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking recover. Two more. What else could we use? Slippery could be useful. Defensive stance could be useful. Yeah, fierce and brutality could go well with the veterans, couldn't it? So I'm thinking, I'm thinking a little, a little bit of role playing there as well in terms of what's suitable. So fearsome. Brutality. And one more, I was thinking of Slippery, wasn't I? Um, berserk, possibly. Defensive stance. I think, I think Slippery. Right, so these maneuvers are basically kind of like special attacks or special actions that you can use during the, during the combat, during the game. Um, everybody in the warband can use them. They're not limited, except for battle cry. Battle cries for leaders and veterans only. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, it doesn't say how many times you can use it, so obviously you must be able to use it more than once in a battle. Now, that is different to the combat actions. The combat actions are limited in terms of how many times you can use them in a battle. Let's go back to here. Command actions. Um, available to you to, uh, to play at the start of your turn, as long as your leader's alive. Uh, normally is three per battle, but there are some situations where you can get more. Um, once used, they're spent for the remainder of the battle. So with c command actions, these things here, your leader will get three at the start of the battle and you can choose which three, and it can be different from battle to battle. Um, but once you use it, you can't use it anymore that game. It's just like a one-use thing. Right, so that is that done. So command actions I won't choose until we actually start the battle. And that's that done. Right, we have created our first warband, the Damned Sect. A demonic host warband. We have five members. We have the witness. Again, there's no space to write their names. Um, I'll come up with some names probably. We've got the witness who has uh, brigandine armor with a bastard sword. Um, we have two veterans or twisted soldiers, twisted sisters. Are the figures, can I do the figures as female? I might be able to do the figures as female, uh, in which case they're going to be my twisted sisters. Um, these guys, I've got padded leather. They've both got helms, one has open, one has visored, one has a flail, one has a hand axe. And then we have two grunts, two dweebs, no armor, <laughs> one has a club, one has a dagger. Yeah, that's not so good. Um, let down a little bit in terms of my supplies. Supplies is essentially your coinage. Um, it's used to pay your upkeep to purchase items 
So it's like your currency in this game. You start with D20 plus 20. Yeah. Couple of pieces of things in me stash, but we are ready to go. However, I think this video is long enough. So what we will do in the next video is we'll start with the first management phase. Find out what is going to be in the next hex and whether it's something that we are going to fight over and try to claim or whether it's just an area where maybe my guys get killed. <laughs> right, so that is how you create a warband. We are going to continue with the Damned Sect and the playthrough after this, so keep your eyes open on the channel. Ring the bell so you can get notified when I do update the videos or upload the videos. And in the meantime, I am going to print out the figures for my warband. Like I say, I got some nice suitable STLs from Artisans Guild. So I will get them printed, I'll get them painted, and then we will continue with Warlord Ascendant, the playthrough. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe, especially if you enjoy the videos. Take care, stay safe, cheers.